Okay, let's see if we can do this problem. You have a copper sphere of two and a half centimeters in diameter. It, ha it tells you, have you have a uniform temperature of 40 degrees C across the sphere. Now, we can check that later to see if we believe it's uniform. And it's suspended in slow moving air and the temperature is zero C. And the airstream, it tells you, has a convective heat transfer coefficient of 15. Whoa, I lost something. Uh, ooh, okay, 15 uh, watts per meter squared Kelvin. Neglect radiation. And then uh, talking about copper being highly conductive, the, the notion is that the sphere um, is has a uniform temperature throughout. So there's a lot of hints in this problem, and basically it's saying that uh, you you know the the BO number, um, which we haven't really uh, talked about in depth, is much much less than one. And um, before we sort of attempt to do this problem, I actually like to talk about the background of the BO number, and um, the meaning of it, I think that might be kind of important. So um, let me start in a funny place. Let's let's go back to some of the equations. Um, so hang on a second here. So this is your textbook, and um, I want to put two things next to each other. I, what I want to put next to each other is this equation right here, the equation that's um, for convection, Q equals H bar T body minus T infinity, and the, equa and the Fourier equation that we've been using all along, which is essentially, oops, uh, Q is equal to negative K delta T delta X. So let's look at those equations next to each other. T body minus T infinity. So what I want you to do is kind of look at these equations next, you know, next to each other. And I want you to see the similarity in these equations. And if you had to rearrange the equations to even make them a little bit more similar, you could do that. You could rewrite this top equation to be, um, uh, oops, to see the difference is you have a, a conduct conductivity term here. You have a convection term. Here you have a delta T, you have a delta, delta T over X, and here you just have a delta T. So if I were to rewrite these, uh, I could I could leave this top one as is uh, negative uh, this, and now notice this version of th this equation the equation has a very similar term delta t delta x where the L in this case is, is the dimension of the, the body that, you're, that, you're, that is giving off the heat. So notice then, if we were to take a ratio, we ask ourselves, okay, I have conduction and I have convection. Let me take a ratio of those two. Um, you know, you could, or, I'm going to write it this way since it's it's convenient. You'll see why it's convenient. H bar over L, or excuse me, H bar times L divided by K of the body. And I, I want you to look at these two terms and essentially look at what you're analyzing when you're comparing these two is you're analyzing the rate of convection here, the proportionality constant. So we have the heat transfer by convection and we have the heat transfer by conduction. If you have a solid body or, or whatever, a, a, well, okay, a solid body, here's your solid body, let's say it's a sphere. And this thing has some sort of internal temperature and let's say we were to, to plot the temperature as a function of uh, distance 
and we know that it's giving heat off to the environment, uh, a question becomes, what does this temperature gradient look like on the inside of this thing? Is it, um, is it going to be constant throughout, or is it going to you know, drop down like this? Uh, and then what about when it, it gets through here? Will it, will it be something like, you know, this or you know, something like this? And you can see what you're comparing here is you're kind of in a serial process where you have to, f step one, you have to conduct the heat to the surface. And step two is that you have to conduct the heat away from the surface. So um, again, two-step process. One is um, to the surface. And the second process is a, and the second process is away from the surface. So again, you have conduction and convection. And you can imagine that if this process was really fast, one was fast and two was slow, two would be the rate limiting process. Or if we had it the other way around, two was really fast and one was really slow, then one would be the rate limiting process. So all you're doing in this comparison, in this ratio, is you're asking yourself, if I compare the two and we let the, the gradient, let's pretend like the gradient is the distance or the roughly the size of the thing. Um, uh, if that was occurring by convection versus conduction, which one would be faster? Which um, term right here out front would be larger. And so if the can, you can see if uh, the H bar times L is really small compared to the conductivity, this number is going to be much less, uh, much less than one, uh, much less than one, the number one. Another way of saying that is if the conductivity is really fast compared to the convection, then this number is, is very, very small. And so you can just intuitively know in that case, then this will be the, the fast process. One will be fast, two will be slow. And so the profile will probably looks something like this, where you'll have, you'll have, um, a, a f <laughs> I really need to get a different pad here. You have a flat profile because temperature, the conduction happens so rapidly, and then this one falls off slowly. So this is the rate limiting process when this ratio is much smaller than one. And this is the thing that's called the, the BO number. And I, anyway, I wanted you to have a physical sense of the BO number. Basically, you're comparing the rate of convection to the rate of conduction and um, asking which one takes place faster. And when conduction takes place much faster, then we can start solving the equation here uh, as the rate limiting step and looking at uh, uh, convection as controlling the temperature profile.